and I'll switch my mic off. Have fun. Okay, thank you very much, Sean. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I'm David Petrie. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of Cambridge exams. <clears throat> At least I hope so, anyway, assuming we don't get any more technical glitches. Um, so just to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to talk about, um, the in essence, I'm going to talk you through the changes, um, change by change, exam by exam. Um, and if you have any questions at any point during that, then please uh, put them in the chat box and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, and then uh, towards the end, the latter half of the session, uh, we're going to look at the, the implications of that. Um, so what do the changes mean and what do our learners need to know as a result of that? Okay, so um, let's first of all think about what the influence of the exam is. Um, your opportunity here, um, yeah, uh, answers in the chat box. What do you think uh, the influence of the exam is? This is sort of thinking about washback uh, and impact, uh, if you're familiar with those terms. The influence of the exam on the surroundings. Any any ideas in the chat box? And this is where I get paranoid that I've lost the connection again, and uh, nothing is going to happen. All right. Uh, possibly my chat box is a bit delayed. Not sure. Anyway, um, think so. Thinking about the the influence of the exam. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, my ideas were that the when when you think about what the exam affects. It kind of affects everything it touches. Um, I, I wrote a piece, uh, a blog post a, a while back where I was thinking of the exam as this kind of black hole at the center of the universe dragging everything educational towards it. And I think to a large extent that's quite true. If you think about changes that are gonna, going to need to be done to course books, changes that you might need to make to the school curriculum, uh, changes to your own teaching possibly. Um, so these, as I say, are, are my ideas about what the exam influences. But we're going to come back to these ideas um, a bit later on um, once we've talked about what those changes are. Okay, so you are all here, um, I hope, because you want to know what those changes are. Um, and for anyone who's not aware, those changes are going to be taking place from January 2015. So all of your learners who are doing the exam in December, they need the old information, the old structures and syllabuses, and everybody working from January next year needs to be prepped according to the new specifications. Um, so diving straight in, uh, we're going to start with the first certificate exam, or Cambridge English First as it should now be called. Um, and going to look at the reading. So these, this is the biggest. <coughs> pardon me. This is the biggest change uh, within first certificate, uh, and it's the combination of the reading paper with the use of English. So if you look at the way that the reading paper was structured according to the old specifications, and again the use of English, um, it's really quite straightforward. The change is mostly they're just making that combination. Um, so all of the use of English tasks uh, go to the beginning of the new combined paper, and the reading tasks go to the, uh, to the back, which does make you wonder why they called it reading and use of English and not the other way around, but never mind. Um, and the, the questions, the number of questions has been um, reduced. So as you can see, mostly going down to eight questions for the use of English apart from the keyword transformations, which is six, uh, and significant reductions in the, in the reading papers. Um, I tried to work out uh, whether that 
had any impact on the amount of time that students needed in order to do the questions. And in simple terms, it doesn't. I mean, they've reduced the, the overall time for the two papers. You're going down from uh, one hour 45 minutes to one hour 15 minutes. So there's a half hour reduction. But the amount of time per question is broadly the same. It's about one minute, uh, about one and a half minutes, maybe just, just over that um, per question. So that's, I think, uh, quite straightforward. Nothing, nothing really changing in terms of text type. Um, so there you go. That's the uh, sort of easier to read version. Okay. Um, however, the when you look at the handbooks, the the focus um, has uh, been rewritten. I think is the best way to describe it. I don't think they have actually changed the focus. Uh, the, the old handbook specified this kind of grammatical, lexico-grammatical focus, which um, said everything and nothing at the same time. And I think that's basically where they're going with the revised descriptions. They're going into a lot more detail. Um, I think the, the, the first task, which is the, the multiple choice close task, um, one thing I think in there that it is actually going to be different is this idea of semantic precision, as in choosing the, the right word, um, the, the difference between um, haste and speed, perhaps, um, might, be, might be one that comes up. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty much the same. I'm not sure if you have any different opinions to that. Um, and again, in the uh, part three, I think we always we always had this idea of uh, prefixes, suffixes, and the the internal changes um, compounding in word formation. So this idea of out and come coming together to become outcome. This this compound formation of words. Uh, I'm not sure how new it is, but the fact that they put it in there suggests that's that's uh, an additional focus. Uh, learners need to know about. Um, and I think also in the part four, the, this addition of uh, collocation. I think traditionally I, I certainly have seen the, the keyword transformations as being more of a grammar focus. Um, you know, this, this idea of, of making the comparison, my car is quicker than yours, uh, my car is not as fast as yours, this uh, grammatical um, structural change. But I think the inclusion of collocation is, is um, possibly building better paraphrase skills, you know, maybe changing from um, Latin-based vocabulary to uh, phrasal verbs, for example, uh, return versus took it back, or something like that. Um, um, and in terms of the reading, there, there doesn't, again, seem to be that much change. Um, Organization, but uh, the, the, again, you know, it, I, I think in, in in basic terms, these are essentially the same tasks. Okay, uh, so writing again, a fairly big change. The the first task is uh, completely different now. It's an essay, um, and the word count is, as you can see, increased, going 140, 190 words. Um, I, but I'm just thinking, I, I don't believe the time for the writing has changed. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I don't think it's changed. It's more that they kind of got to do more in the time. Um, that, I think, is based on uh, what the students, what they're testing, uh, their validation process of the exam has shown that candidates can do. Um, so I don't think it's more difficult necessarily. They should all be capable of this. Um, the the content uh, of the the essay question is uh, considerably reduced to the typical uh, letter and email tasks. There's much much less input. Um, they are given um, two content points that they have to work with. These are quite short uh, sentences or or chunks. Um, and uh, there is space for the candidate's own idea, 
and they do need to include their own idea in that. So if they leave that out, then they're, they're going to fall short on the, on the content point. Um, but I think it is an easier, uh, it's, it's quite an accessible task. Um, it's basically a discursive essay. They're given the content points. It's a kind of a pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages type thing. Um, though obviously that, that uh, depends on the question a bit. Okay. Um, the rest of the writing paper is streamlined. Um, they're going from five questions to three questions, and the book question is gone. So all of those uh, teachers who loved teaching the literature and enjoyed reading the Phantom of the Opera six times in a school year, uh, that's no longer going to happen. Um, and obviously, they've taken the essay out, the essay task out of part two, um, because it's in part one. Okay. Again, the word count is more uh, has, has been increased, um, but I think it's it's again it's streamlined. It's more accessible. There's three questions. The students choose one. Um, I think it this this streamlining is is going to allow for um, uh, more effective technique teaching in, in that we're not going to have quite as much to do. Uh, so that's that's the theory. Oh, and the story has gone as well. So all of those those of you who enjoyed teaching stories, all of that creative aspect, that is no longer in there. Possibly. I, I don't know why they don't think that's valuable. Um, well, possibly, yeah, anyway. OK, so there is no use of English. Um, it's gone into the reading, so moving on to the listening, and as you can see, it's basically the same. Uh, I couldn't find, well, there was one change that I found, uh, and that is that in the third part, the multiple matching task, they now have eight options to choose from, from six. So this is the one where they have, uh, they hear five speakers, and they have to choose from sentences one to eight now. Uh, which sentence best matches each speaker's uh, opinion or attitude or um, whatever that happens to be. Okay. Uh, speaking. Yep. Again, speaking, there's no, no massive changes, little tweaks. The first part is a bit shorter. Um, the From my end, it looks like he's frozen, and I think we all agree. Ah, oh, David, if you're there, you were frozen. He might have to uh, leave and come back. I might have to kick him out in a second. Hello. Hi, David. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Can you see me again? I can't see you. No. Where your camera's coming on now. There you go. There we go. Uh, I've lost the slides, actually. So I know what they are, but <laughs> <laughs> I can still see them. So hang on a sec. It might. Okay, so we're, we're still we're still talking about the speaking, I think, aren't we? Yeah, the speaking side uh, is the one. I don't think anybody heard anything on this much on the speaking. So perhaps start again from there. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, so sorry. Didn't you didn't hear any of the speaking bit? I get, and you just you froze at various points with different people. So to start the speaking bit again, then everybody will have it. Um, yeah. So basically, the speaking there is uh, no real change. Um, no real change. Sorry, there are changes. This is what we're here to talk about. Yeah. So part one is slightly smaller. Uh, part four has an additional focus on speculation. Uh, which, again, I don't think makes that much difference to what the students need to do. Um, the, the biggest change is within part three, where um, they are, they're, they're no longer using pictures as the basis of the task. They're using a, a text-based uh, prompt, uh, which basically means a, a kind of um, 
you know, spidergram mind map. So uh, instead of having a picture of a cafe in the middle and pictures of um, dance music or, or sporting events and this kind of thing, um, they will have the text instead. It will say ideas for a cafe in the center and around the outside it will have um, watching sport on TV or what have you. Um, and the students then need to work off that instead of the instead of the imagery. Um, again, I'm not sure why they would choose to do that, except possibly for reasons of cost. I don't know. Um, the other difference there is that uh, the discussion and decision stages have been separated out. Uh, so. Uh, the, the first part is is a pure discussion. Which options do they think are would be would be good? Uh, and then uh, the interlocutor interrupts, says, "Thank you very much. Now you have one minute to decide which option you think is best." Um, presumably, this is to give the students more of an opportunity to to actually discuss things uh, without worrying about having to. Um, to come to that initial decision, um, just separating out the functions. Again, I, I don't think it, it's going to have massive implications for, for for what for training the students. Uh, possibly, you know, it might make it easier to separate out this kind of discussion and decision making uh, language if there are any kind of fixed chunks and this kind of thing. Um, okay, all right. That's basically the end of the first certificate side of things. So if anybody has any questions about that, now would be a good time to ask about the, uh, the first certificate exam. Somebody's typing. Two people are typing. Are these questions? Will my connection ever allow me to see them? Uh, current course book. That depends on the um, on the course book. Uh, if you mean, is the course book with 2008 specification still good for teaching students to the 2015? Uh, yes and no. I think the um, the, the, my main concern would be the, um, uh, the the writing paper. I think that's where the learners are going to need significant um, instruction, especially when it comes to writing essays. Um, and I think most of the current course books they tend to uh, most of the 2008 specification course books tend to have more of a focus on letters and emails because that's the primary task. That's the one that they, uh, they, they, can't, uh, they can't not choose. Um, so I think that's something that, that would need to, uh, the teacher would need to add in. Um, but as far as the rest of it's concerned, I don't think it would make that much difference. I think that, you know, like the, the tasks in the reading and the use of English are essentially the same, they're just smaller. Um, Maybe within the listening, that that additional eight options. But again, perhaps the teacher could adapt that those those papers or um, get the students even to come up with additional ideas. Um, and I H Rome, your question: How can the teacher grade the various papers to give students an idea of their final? Do you mean to what extent the marks are weighted into the final grade? Um, I don't know the. My my guess would be to give reading and use of English a 40% weighting, and then the other papers a 20% weighting. That's what I would recommend. Um, but I don't know if that's officially how Cambridge do it. I, I have a suspicion that is what is said in one of the handbooks, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so it might be worth checking the handbook. So I'll try that. Oh, OK. Yes, people confirming that. Good. OK. Any more, or shall we move on to the advanced? Advanced it is then. Okay. Um, and basically, the the whole kind of process that's happened to the first certificate exam is what is also happening to the advanced exam. 
So this combination of the reading and the use of English is going to happen. Um, and again, this uh, significant reduction in time. Um, just a note on this slide, the formatting's gone awry slightly there. Um, not quite sure what happened there, sorry. Um, so anyway, within the, the 2008 reading specification, we have lost part one. That task is no longer in the revised exam. So that's the one there where you had the three uh, relatively short texts, and there were two multiple choice questions for each text. That's gone. And in the use of English, it is the part four, the gapped sentences, the ones where you had three sentences and you had to choose one word to go into the, the same gaps in each uh, in each of the three sentences. If that makes sense. Anyway, that task is no longer there. Uh, so that was looking at multiple meanings um, of uh, the same word, but that's gone. The keyword transformation tasks are still there. Okay, and we have a new task as well. Um, so again, the uh, the number of questions for each part has been reduced, and uh, the amount of time um, has been significantly reduced. We've gone from two hours, 15 minutes, down to uh, 90 minutes. Um, and uh, the new part is part six. We'll, we'll take another look at that in a, in a short moment. Okay. It looks a little bit confusing with all the arrows pointing everywhere, but it's straightforward enough when you when you look at the paper. Uh, I mentioned that it's gone from uh, 2 hours and 15 minutes down to 90 minutes. Um, this has had an impact on the amount of time students get to uh, ask the question. Um, okay, the number of questions has also been reduced, but whereas before they had about 1 minute 40 something seconds uh, to answer each question. In this revised exam, it's gone down to 1 minute 35. Um, practically, I don't think you can train your students to do a question five seconds faster, but I do think that um, they will need some training in time management. In fact, I think that's a good point for, for both the um, first and the advanced exams. I think when these papers were separated out, it was relatively easy for the students to work out how long they could spend on, on each section. Um, certainly when you had the, um, the use of English for the for first certificate, use of English at 45 minutes, that, you know, it's broadly speaking, it was about 10 minutes per section, um, with you know, five minutes left over for corrections. Um, and again, with the reading, you had about 20 minutes per section. Um, I would imagine you're all about to type that he's gone again. He, he really has gone gone this time. He's he's been kicked from the room by the looks of it. So. Um, You'll just have to wait for a sec. Hopefully, he'll come back on as quickly as possible. He'll need to go out the room, re reconnect, come back in again, so it'll take a couple of minutes. Oh, there he is. And I think his sound is coming back now. There yep, you go. Sorry. Okay. Third time I'm lucky. Right. Um, yes, timings. So, sorry, did everybody hear the bit about timings? Yeah? Okay. Uh, right. So, I think the, yeah, w with these combined reading and use of English, I think we're really going to have to work with students to, to make sure they know how to pace themselves through the Well, I would offer to take over and finish the uh, webinar, but I actually know very little about the exams these days. <laughs> um, maybe we should set him up and ask loads of questions in the board, just so when he comes back, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, I'm going to suggest that to him when he comes back on, Luke.
but, but um, it does look like he's getting cut completely. So he's, he's often had internet troubles. So he's done a few webinars over time. I think it's just a dodgy connection in the school. He may never come back. We could be left hanging for the rest of the day. Oh, he's there. Moving you up now, David. David, leave your video off. I assume you can hear me. Leave your video off. Let's try right, that video. Hi. Okay. Hi. Sorry. Fourth time lucky. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll try this without the video. Hopefully, that will uh, sort things out. Anyway, yes. So, um, make sure you students know how to pace themselves through the paper. <laughs> I think we'll just move on from this now. It seems to be an unlucky slide. Okay, uh, so yeah, part six of the reading and use of English is what they're referring to as four text, cross text questions. Um, this is as much of the example as I could fit on the slide and keep my lovely graphics at the bottom. Um, but on, in part six, you have these four separate texts. In this example, these are four different reviews of Alan de Botton's book, The Architecture of Happiness or at least um, abridged extracts of those reviews. And I don't know if anyone can read that first question, but it says, which reviewer has a different opinion from the others on the confidence with which the bottom discusses architecture? In other words, in order to answer that question, the students need to have read and understood all four reviews and to have identified the writer's opinion in each and to have worked out which opinion is different from the others. Um, the other questions are of a similar nature. Um, again, I think this is something that, that learners are going to need a little bit of help working with initially. Um, so Nick, your question about whether the current course book was good for FCE. With FCE, I think you can get away with it. With CAE, possibly not. Um, so. Yeah, critical thinking. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Anya, that's a really good point. Um, for me, this is. Um, I see this in the wider context of Cambridge trying to um, position this particular exam as being an academic access exam. So I suspect they're trying to um, shift it over to take over some of the IELTS and TOEFL territory and uh, get. Um, universities to sort of, th these are the sorts of tasks that they can send to universities to say, look, we're teaching our students how to do this so that they can do the exam properly. Um, and because the exam is at level as opposed to um, uh, IELTS, which is multi-level, um, then anyone who's, who's passed the CAE will have not only the right uh, level of English to succeed in acad academia in the UK and elsewhere, um, but they will have also encountered the uh, some academic skills in terms of the essay writing and reading and just accessing this information and interpreting this information. Uh, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. Part six, this idea of comparing and contrasting opinions and attitudes across texts. That was one of the changes in the, um, uh, in the specifications. Um, but also part seven includes this uh, global meaning, uh, which is, was not there before the, um, the focus. And I'm not, if I'm honest, I'm not really sure why it's there. I don't see that there is a significant difference to the way the task is structured. Um, 
I suppose that if the students have an understanding, a global understanding of the text, it will help them to work out which paragraphs go in which order. Um, but I would imagine that a lot of the kind of uh, cohesive devices um, that, um, that that we use, uh, you know, sort of the, the uh, anaphoric and cataphoric referencing, uh, these things should be able to help the students to um, link these paragraphs together. So I, I, I'm not completely sure why global meaning is in there particularly. Unless, again, that is also part of a marketing strategy. Uh, so, writing. Again, the um, part one has been changed to an essay, and the word count has been increased, so increased, and the amount of input has been reduced. So, in, in that respect, it's very similar to the first certificate. Um, they are given three content points to work with and required to choose two of them. So in other words, they don't have to write about all three. It's not entirely clear what will happen if they do, except that they are unlikely to deal with the two content points in sufficient depth if they are writing about three of the options. Yeah? Um, so again, it's coming back to this academic investigation idea of looking at the topic matter and um, investigating it intellectually and then putting that down there. Um, again, I don't, I don't think it's uh, particularly difficult to access. So we'll, we'll come back again to looking at essays and um, uh, what, what, how we can help learners with the essays a little bit later on. So part two, again, very streamlined. Again, the book has gone. Um, and again, the number of tasks has been significantly reduced. The word count is the same, however. So again, they have more to do in uh, the same amount of time as they had before. Um, letter, proposal, report, and review, those are the only text types. So I, I never entirely understood what a competition entry was meant to be anyway. It kind of had this dualistic purpose. It was. It was you were trying to win the competition, but then it was always in a different structure. So it's usually an article of some kind. Um, so I don't know why they ever had competition entry and why they didn't just have article, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, competition entry, uh, contribution to a larger text, these are all gone. Information sheet, um, again, one that I always struggled with, and I think my learners did too. Um, so that as I said before, is much more streamlined and I think much more accessible. I think it allows us to, to give a much uh, more effective focus to the um, uh, to our teaching and, uh, and I think this will help our learners uh, to develop their writing more efficiently. Okay, uh, listening again, it's basically the same. There's no real difference. Um, again, thinking about the one difference that I did find, it was just that the focus in the task description, the focus has been expanded to include opinion, purpose, and speaker feeling. Um, identifying emotions in speakers may be uh, a slightly different thing to identifying their attitude. Um, but again, looking at the you know, the difference between what they say and what they mean, uh, that I think will be, um, well, no, that, that difference, that, that isn't a difference. That was basically what they had to do before. Um, so I, I don't think there's much impact there. And finally, in the speaking, um, again, part one is reduced, but part four has been increased. Um, it's... Again, the task is essentially the same. Again, the difference is in part three. And again, the uh, part three is different because the, they no longer have the pictures to work with. They're working with these text-based prompts. Uh, and the discussion and decision stages of the task have been separated out. So much of what I said about the first certificate is true here. Um, I think um, just focusing in on proper discussion techniques, 
and focusing in on um, decision-making strategies and sort of helping people lead each other to uh, decisions. Um, these, I think, are things that uh, we'll need to do with our learners. Okay. Right, that brings us to the end, broadly speaking, of the advanced exam. Does anybody have any questions about the advanced exam? I'm hoping that the lack of typing is not because I've gone, lost my connection for the fourth time. Now people are typing. Now. I don't speculation. I again, the the part four questions are always these. Uh, broader questions that are associated with the topic in part three. That hasn't changed, but I suspect that some of the questions are now going to require the students to uh, make some kind of guesses about the future. So yeah, there might be questions like, what do you think the impact of, um, what do you think the impact of this might be on, on a wider context? That, that, that degree. Um, uh, that degree of speculation then, yeah. Uh, sorry, IH Rome, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Do you, there are always three questions in part two of the writing, but there are four different text types that the, that the, the tasks might be drawn from. So those are the, uh, the letter, the report, the proposal, and the article, I think. I'll just go back a second. Oops, too fast. Yeah, okay, so letter, proposal, report, and review. Well, there are four text types, and there are three possible questions. So, no. I mean, a report and a proposal are pretty similar, but... Okay, so um, what are the implications of all this? We've discussed some of these implications already, um, and this is what I think, better or worse. Um, I think there's an additional focus, well, an additional focus, or maybe a more explicit focus on uh, lexicality. I think thinking about um, moving, for example, the uh, keyword transformation focus from uh, this um, the more grammatical structure to a more lexical focus, um, and thinking about the um, the significance of words, not just the, the kind of the surface meaning, but the the, the underlying meanings. Uh, I think word choices is um, uh, definitely something uh, something that they need to start again. I think word choice is definitely something that learners need to be more aware of, um, and I think that they need a a broader a broader range. Um, it's something. It's very easy in exam teaching to assume the students have the vocab they need and most of the grammar, but none of the exam training. And I think that's something we need to maybe rethink. Um, obviously, they still need some degree of exam training, but I think I am going to be pushing my uh, first certificate uh, students. I don't have an advanced class this year, um, but definitely pushing my first certificate students with additional vocab training, um, especially with um, sort of the a more lexical range, more kind of um, collocations, uh, fixed expressions, and uh, phrasal verbs. The, these, these, I think, are, are where they need a bit of a push forwards. Um, as we mentioned before, this, this discussion and decision separation in the speaking, I think, is something that they need to focus on. Um, focus on function. Why have I put that in there? I suppose really thinking about 
or getting the, the students to think about why they use the language rather than just uh, viewing it uh, in a grammatical context. Again, uh, thinking of um, well, think, thinking of my first certificate book this year, um, it has very clear, very delineated grammar sections, and it works its way through most of the major grammar points that they, that you could expect to encounter at B2. Um, and you know, I, I, I do think this is worthwhile for the students to do, but I would like them to think about um, grammar as choice um, and what the, you know, what they need to use in order to express their meaning more effectively. That's something I think that they need to do. Um, critical thinking skills and deeper text evaluation are, are, are sort of linked. I mean, we talked about critical thinking a little bit earlier when we were looking at the um, revised part six in the reading. Um, but I think engaging texts at a at beyond the surface level is something that um, our learners don't get much practice at. Um, I think a lot of course book reading tasks focus on this idea of detail and gist, or gist and detail, whichever way round it happens to be. I think gist tasks are not always gist tasks. They often require a degree of um, detailed understanding or they require the students to look for specific information. But what I would like to do is I'd like to take my I'd like to get my students to sort of think about the text in the wider context, not just to think about the text within the, the context of the book, the, the course book or the lesson. But what are the implications on, on of that? So I mean, for example, last week I taught an upper intermediate group which um, had a reading on the Ig Nobel Prizes, um, like these. Uh, these are the um, Nobel Prizes for people that do spurious research or research that doesn't seem to have much of a point. Um, and so I was trying to ask my students, you know, well, why do you think people research these things? Why? Why would you? What would you? What could they be doing instead? Is it a useful waste? Uh, sorry, is it a useful waste of resources? Is it a useful uh, spending of resources, is, or is it a waste of time? Getting them to sort of think in, in in those contexts and engage with the material in the text, with the content of the text, not just uh, trying to look for you know, which answer A, B, C, or D. Um, I also think the Students are going to need, well, I've talked about this a bit already, but this, with, with the writing and with the essay, um, it occurred to me recently that when students are writing an essay at first certificate level, I think what they need is um, a, decent, a decent understanding of how to structure an essay in the overall context. I think it is probably enough, as in it would get them a pass, if they were able to structure an essay with an introduction, two main body paragraphs and a conclusion, and if the paragraphs were broadly connected by, by content. Um, if they linked across paragraphs, so much the better. And obviously, I think this is a bare minimum. I don't think this is, is um, you know, what they should be aiming for. They should be aiming for something much more sophisticated. Um, but I think they could probably get away with that, that degree of focus. I think when you get up to the advanced level, however, I think you need to be looking at um, sort of much stronger paragraphing skills. And I think you know, a, a greater awareness of discourse patterns, um, you know, this idea of, for example, the general specific example pattern or the claim and the counterclaim pattern. Um, which, of course, function at the text level as well as at the paragraph level, but um, uh, or, or problem solution, I think, is the other one, isn't it? Um, but I think having an awareness of these structures and how they work at the paragraph level, and actually really, really pushing them to structure and organise their paragraphs effectively, I think that is going to make the difference at uh, at advanced level. I think it's something that they often come from first certificate into advanced, and it's what they struggle with. 
because they've never really been pushed to do it before. Um, but I think that's that is certainly one way that they, they could uh, develop their uh, develop their essay writing skills. Okay, I, I'm aware because we started a bit late that we're kind of a bit pushed for time. Um, so with what I make the last four minutes or so, I mean I, I don't mind going over, but I'm aware that people have lessons to get to and this kind of thing. So I'm just going to throw the floor open to questions. Um, does anybody have any additional questions at this stage? Yeah, because you start teaching at 3 o'clock, don't you, then? Yeah. OK. Uh, right. Well, again, coming just to, to sort of finish up, then, the um, my, my view is that the changes to the exam do need or do require us to make um, additional changes in, in all of these areas. Um, I don't know whether the students well, the first question I got, when the proficiency exam changed, the first question I got asked by one of my proficiency students is, is it easier? And the answer I, I gave them was typically evasive. I said, I don't think it's easier, but I think it is more accessible. And I think broadly speaking, um, broadly speaking, that is also true for the first certificate and advanced um, exams. Uh, just briefly, IH Rome, um, I have no idea. Four short texts is all it specifies. So it could be, um, presumably, they, they'll be connected by topic in some way, shape, or form. Um, but four, four short texts. Um, but I think, yeah, I think what our students uh, expect from the exam probably won't change. Uh, you know, they will expect to. Uh, fail or pass, as the case may be. Um, but I think we need to, to make changes in, or certainly you need to change your coursebook if you are, uh, uh, if you're teaching for the 2015 specification. Yes, there are a lot of new coursebooks with 2015 specifications available. However, there are also still a large number of coursebooks with the 2008 specifications already available. At least one major publisher made significant revisions to their coursebook before the 2015 specifications were released. So their fourth edition is basically a warmed over version of their third edition with redone for the 2015 specifications. But seeing as they were both published in 2014, um, there, there has been, um, I'm sure there will be, a certain amount of confusion. So uh, that was Cambridge. Um, yeah, no, the Cam Cambridge published uh, Objective First. Um, they published their revised third edition with 2008 specifications. I think it was either this year or last year. And then when the 2015 specifications came out, they revised it again. But they look identical. Um, so make sure your students get the the actual one they need. Um, Anastasia, if I actually, um, without wishing to self-publicize, I, uh, I reviewed a bunch of uh, first certificate books on, on my blog, which is teflgeek.net. So you should be able to, if you want to take a look there, um, some of the Cambridge exam books, well, some of the first certificate versions, uh, you can find reviews of that there. Um, I've never been a big fan of Ready for First Certificate. I'm not entirely sure why, but I just always found it a slightly, um, it, it's got a foot in, in, in two worlds, and I don't think it, it does either job particularly effectively, in my view, but um, that's just my view. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so my, my clock makes it 2 o'clock. I don't know whether that means we are forced to stop or not. Um, but I will happily continue answering your questions for the time being, or until Sean cuts us off. Uh, I think you'll cut yourself off before I cut you off. <laughs>
Ooh, a dig, a veritable dig. <laughs> um, no, that was humor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yes, a, a lot of them are tweaked versions, but some of them have had more significant revisions than others. Um, ooh, masterclass, really? Okay. Each to their own. Um, <laughs> um, I think uh, complete first. If it is for the re if it says it's for the revised exam of 2015, I'm assuming it it, it has to be. Uh, I don't think they could get away with uh, advertising that otherwise. Um, Expert is out. I'm quite a big fan of Expert. Um, I yeah. I, I don't know. I when I when I went through uh, all of the books back in May and June, um, I my eventual choice was objective. Um, in part, that is because our school has consistently had um, how shall I phrase this delicately without getting ourselves into legal trouble. Um, has not received the same standard of customer service from some publishers as we might have done with other publishers. Um, and as such, books by some publishers um, don't really ent enter into our consideration. And that's really just a customer service issue. It's not a reflection of the book. Um, if I was given free reign in what to choose, it would probably come down to a fight between ex expert or objective. Those are the two that I have used most over the years, and those are the two that uh, uh, that I have enjoyed using most over the years. Um, but that just, again, reflects my own personal preference. Any other questions? Maybe questions that aren't about books. <laughs> No. I don't. I, well, the, to be honest, the reason I don't think much of masterclass is because I have used masterclass at proficiency level, and I find it incredibly dull and tedious. Um, it's really, really dry, and a lot of our learners who get up to proficiency level are at the kind of the older teen, young university student. I'm sure it's an excellent book for, for an older adult market, but I don't think it's quite right for our classes. Um, I've not looked at the first master class, so I, I can't really comment on it. But if it's the same as the, the other books in the master class series, then I probably wouldn't go near it for my classes. This is the fun bit of the seminar where we get to slag off all the books we're using, or not, as the case may be. Okay, so um, I think. Do I have another slide? I can't remember. Oh, your idea. Well, we've kind of done that already. <laughs> um, so I think if that's. if, if Unless anybody has any additional questions, um, that's it from me. Oh, yes, there you go. Sorry, one more thing. Um, the Cambridge have released uh, two microsites. So these are websites within the Cambridge English setup, but they are specifically aimed at first certificate and advanced certificate with a view to giving you all the information you need about the, the Cambridge exams. Um, and because it's a Cambridge exam, and Cambridge is tied to Cambridge, the publishers. They also have a few download materials from some of their uh, books. Um, but in terms of downloads and handbooks and information about the changes, these uh, microsites should be um, should be your first port of call, I suspect. OK. Um, that's it. That's all from me. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you to Sean for jumping in and doing a little dance routine when my connection went south. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, see you all again soon. Thank you, David. Thank you for persevering. So nothing worse than trying to deliver your webinar, and then the internet's cutting out on you.
So well done for getting through it. Really useful. Uh, I find it useful anyway. I hope, I hope you didn't pick up any of the swearing that went on behind the scenes when the connection cut out. No, luckily yeah. the, connect, the, the connection really did cut out, otherwise there might have been some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, uh, thank you all for, for joining in. Uh, if you did miss anything or you want to go back and see stuff again, then the, the recording will become available uh, 